Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yes, um, sir. Yes, go ahead. I want to set people straight on these issues, right? Because there's a lot of misinformation going on around there. Yes. And the, you know, you're, only, you're hearing one side. You're hearing the government and, the gov and in some cases in Barbados, the government controlled media not telling the truth. I, I remember on Thursday, a member of staff from CBC called me and said they wanted an interview because the prime minister had made some remarks about me. I said, well, this track was ongoing for more than a week and you have not reported on it at all until the, the prime minister abused me at a meeting. You so you, you want them and I have nothing to say to you. You know, you people are... Um, I know yeah. how it is. Your your phone is going because you're you're the man of the hour right now, man of the yeah. people, and so everybody's calling you. I understand that. Um, but but that you know, Mr. Um, Senator Franklin is one of the reasons I wanted you to be on because I see the comments on Facebook, and that narrative seemed to be um, people are trying to push that narrative. You know that um, the strike is really about you. And not about the, uh, there's, you know, not about the nurses. There are no issues with the nurses. You know, I, I, I normally do not listen to anything the prime minister has to say because it gives you the rubbish. And people will come to me and say, or send me um, clips from the press conference. And one thing she said was, "Oh, that it's political," and mm -hmm. that I, if I want to get involved in politics, I should, I should get a constituency and run. Well, the Prime Minister knows, and if she would be honest with herself, the Prime Minister will tell you that last year, September, mm -hmm. she offered me to run in St. Thomas. She was going to take up Sonia, um, Cynthia Ford and put me to run. I refused. I said, I'm not interested in politics. And this is not the first time I'm saying that. I said it in the campaign and we said drug by election because what happened, when I refused her, she then got 20 more to run because I said she has some health bet that she must get the units under control and she wanted to control mine. So that is rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. When I refused, she got Cynthia, she got, she, she didn't have to take out Cynthia Ford, she then took out Glenn Clark in St. George to make um, 20 more the MP up there. So, that, that tells you, if I wanted to be in the House of Assembly, I would have been in the House of Assembly since last year. Mm -hmm. You know, but, I, but that is not my focus. My focus is representing the workers. And because nobody else is doing anything about Barbados, you have a lot of unions, but they are not living up to what is expected of them. They like to go to meetings with the Prime Minister, sit down and have fancy speeches. And after that, nothing happens. Like this one with the nurse, then they invited the nurse, the nursing association, Barbara's nurse association, to mm -hmm. come to a meeting to discuss proposal that I had put forward. But that, that is so ludicrous, it isn't funny. But they 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 want to negotiate with people who are compliant, people who are doing their bidding. Mm -hmm. I don't do anybody's bidding, but the people who I represent. Right. So that not just about being about me. That they're trying to make it about me. It's not about me. I have not. I have not gone anywhere and invited a single nurse to join Unity Workers Union. All of them have joined this organization because they see they have seen me operate, and they want representation that they do not have or they were not getting for years. Right. That's all about. I can assure you, I have not gone a single nurse. As a matter of fact, I do not mark it. Mm. I do not mark it. So whoever joins the union, joins the union because of my reputation. Nothing more you know, you know, Mr. I want to confirm that because I know of a teacher who said to me after she saw what you're doing, she said, well, I'm going to switch and I'm going to the to that union. Um, and she tried to, 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 um, to find you on Facebook and all about the place, you know, uh, and, and a website and and you know, so I, I I know that it doesn't it doesn't exist, you know, in terms of that space. It, it's it's not that you're marketing. So you're so you you kind of put that out the way that it's not it's not politics. 
you're saying to me and you're saying it's not about you. So what is it really about Mr. Um, Senator Franklin? If it's not about you and it's not about um, politics, why would you, what, what is it really about? Look, this strike started when the government tried to enforce these mandates of, to get people vaccinated, okay? They wanted people vaccinated. And in order to persuade people to get vaccinated, they came up with this policy that if you are not vaccinated, you have to be swabbed every Monday. Mm -hmm. They put it in a, a directive, and the directive was published actually. But then people they couldn't go to the doctor's test because they were not vaccinated, and the doctors cried out because they were not getting any money. Mm -hmm. So they pulled back that directive, and they were they're doing it now on the slide. On the Thursday, I can't remember the actual date of it now, but the, the chief medical officer was heard on radio a press conference with one of the Prime Minister Salouts, David Ellis. He said the safe zones are up and running. And they're right, getting I good, remember that. They're getting good cooperation from the geriatric hospital, the psychiatric hospital, and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The next day, the manager of the hospital, acting manager of the, 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 the geriatric hospital, wrote a, mem a memorandum and put it on the board, directing people to go out to get these tests every Monday because the directives were in place. And that you know, so we, we, we said, look, no, 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 this, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. But we had said to the, the Director General of the Public Service, she's the person responsible for industrial relations in the, in the public service. But if they try to enforce these mandates on the workers without any discussion or approval from this union, we will take immediate strike. So when we saw that, we wrote to them and we said, not only will we be taking strike action on these mandates, but we will also then be striking over the other issues that we have been negotiating for, as far as I'm concerned, before COVID. Because mm -hmm. I met with the Director General, and at those meetings, um, Mr. DePisa, he was at those meetings. Mm -hmm. Mind you, when he got the Prime Minister to abuse me, he forgot that he was at those meetings. So he, he, he is saying that we don't go through any protocols, we don't go through anything. But that is an absolute lie. He was present at those meetings and he participated in those meetings, but no, he forgot because he was sitting there to the prime minister and he's saying what the prime minister wants him to say. All right, I, I, let me tell you something. I have nothing further ever to say to that man again because you cannot sit in front of the camera and lie to Barbados or to the world because it was all over the internet. Saying things about me that he knows to be untrue. He was in those meetings with me, at least three of them. And then my COVID started, and then my COVID came about. We started meeting on Zoom with the Director General, and we were all pushing nursing issues. He was pushing the issues on behalf of the Barbados Nurses Association because they have no negotiating capabilities. They don't know what to do. So they, they bring him in to negotiate for them. I don't know who told him that he can negotiate, but somehow they believe that. And he comes into the meetings on their behalf. Right. And yesterday he didn't remember any of these things. He goes on the, 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 the press conference and gave the impression that nothing like that happened. He was there in the chair. Now, let me tell you some of the things that we were talking about. Yes. These nurses. nurses sometimes in Barbados are not paid for extended periods of time. And we were trying to get them to pay nurses when the pay is due. Sometimes five. Let, let's clarify that, sir, because for a lot of us like myself, it's news. We don't mm -hmm. know these things. So you're saying nurses in Barbados have not been, sometimes they're not paid for extended. You mean like two months or three months? What or are we four talking? months or five months. Wow. I, I, in one of my Zoom meetings, I'll tell you this story. It was hard. Rachel, I felt like crying when I heard it. This nurse came into the meeting and she said, for months, she was not paid. She's working on a ward. Mm -hmm. And she said, when some person died on the ward, she wouldn't report it to the kitchen so that when the food comes, she would get something to eat. 
Oh my gosh. That is how bad it is. In Barbados here. In Barbados. She said, been a person that is on the ward. She will not report the death to the kitchen. So the kitchen will still send that patient's food. So she will get somebody to eat because she wasn't paid. When I heard that, my stomach turned. And this is what nurses are struggling through in Barbados, you know. And the authorities talking about political? That's just one. We have another instance where nurses at one institution get hazard, hazard loss. Mm -hmm. But the people who actually work with the patients when they come off the street aren't getting these hazard alarms. So we said that is unfair because mm -hmm. you have them at the hospital get hazard alarms, but they are tested before they go up to the nurses. When you walk into a polyclinic, a guy might come with a broken arm, mm -hmm. but he might got COVID too. So the, those nurses at the polyclinics are, are more in danger and more hazardous situation than the nurses at the hospital who know what they're dealing with. Then now you're dealing with people who could potentially have COVID, but mm -hmm. we're asking for, for PPE. They give nurses five masks for a week. When one mask is only supposed to last for four hours. You're telling right? so, uh, and uh, for, you mean five masks for one for one week? For one week. That can't be hygienic. That is happening in Barbados. No, the nurses have to go and buy their own because they know better. So the nurses have to go and provide supplies to, to, sub, to subsidize the government. And it isn't only for them all personal use because they have to buy sanitizers to clean up the place because the government is not providing sanitizers. I went to a clinic one day and I saw the doctors give somebody money telling them go to this thing and buy some bleach because the place needed cleaning. And the in doctor, Barbados, in, in Barbados? Barbados? Yes, in Barbados. Nurses tell me that they are working in the clinic and these cock Johnny Postles, mice and cockroaches run across their desks. Places are filthy. I don't think I don't think the average Barbadian understand it, um, Senator Franklin. I don't think so. And and you know, I'm gonna just pause to remind people that this is not a show. We're talking about people's lives here, guys. And as you know, the government has cut the nurse's salary, which we're gonna talk about a little later. But I'm mentioning it at this moment because I want you to really dig deep in your from your bank accounts, whatever. We're gonna support these nurses. They are part of us. When you hear this story, guys, when you hear what these nurses are going through, we cannot, we will not let them be victimized twice. We will not allow them to be victimized twice. So I pause for us because this is important here. This is something that you can do practically. Okay, so can you continue with Senator Franklin? Okay. Nurses then sometimes they have to, at the geriatric hospital, it's an old people's home. Sometimes nurses have to go downtown by S.Y. Adam and buy washcloths to bathe patients out their own money because they don't have. You give them three gloves, but each patient has to be bathed with another glove. You can't bathe everybody with the same. You get three gloves and you got 15 patients to bathe. This is going to these nurses go to nurses and be got this has to stop. They're speaking out, and, and because they're speaking out, you won't kill them. You imagine, you imagine being some old person with a pair of gloves, and then you gotta go and wash off those gloves and go bear somebody else. I am they even, they're even telling us that um something called an NG chew, where you feed people through their nose. Oh, and you, have to, you have to go and those shoes are worn, use things. Yeah. But you have to go and clean them, sanitize them, and put them back again because they're mm -hmm. not providing even them. Now, the patient yeah. can, and you have to put their food in through their noses. Now, good dear. Mm -hmm. This is my business we're talking about, you know. So oh. this is they have to do things like that. Mm -hmm. People have to go and buy but people who have um, prostate problems and you have to get the, the bike to collect the urine. Right. So they're going to go and buy them. The nurses. The nurses are oh, I, I don't, so you are telling me the nurses have to, they're buying masks, they're buying sanitizer, 
the nurses are buying out of their own pockets bleach to clean the to clean the the the, the facility, the hospital, the the room, their offices. You know, um, they're and then they they are buying these bags that that the patient needs, so they, and they're buying they're buying washcloth to bathe the to bathe the the the, the, um, the patients. Yes, so they're complaining about that. You wouldn't complain about that too if, if you were a nurse and Barbara's gonna go through that kind of crap. You know? But okay, let me let me that listen here, so stomach churning. Let me go on to the other things. Nurses are appointed in the public service, they are appointed on probation. Mm -hmm. After six months or 12 months, you are supposed to be confirming your appointment if you are medically fit. Yes. When you get those appointment letters, then National Insurance would refund you the excess that you pay because if you are if you are a temporary officer, you pay more national insurance, or if you're a temporary or working in the private sector, you pay more national insurance than a permanently appointed public officer. The reason for that is that public officers are not supposed to go on um what they call it sick leave because mm -hmm. they are paid for their sick leave by the government by, by the government that existed before the national insurance, so they never have to pay for that portion of the national insurance, or they don't pay for unemployment because a permanent employee is not supposed to go unemployed. Right. So they don't, so there's, their um, national insurance contributions are somewhat reduced. You have some people who have been appointed on, on a probation for six months or a year, and two, three, four, five years down the road, they haven't gotten the, comfort, the, comfort, the letter to confirm the appointment. So you are paying excess national insurance. One lady told me, a couple of weeks ago that she got about $1,500, that's over two years, but they had, she was, they, she was better for a lot of, for five years. So that's three years that she paid excess national insurance. Two years, she got about $1,500. Wow. All right. So when you hear them talk about, and that's a, that's another issue. When we talk about appointments, we're talking about, the minister comes and says, well, we made three years about appointments. He addressed the wrong problem because he uh, the, the nursing association didn't put that forward. So when he discussed it with them, they didn't know what the doctor they were talking about. So they gave him the, the wrong information. We were talking about people who have to get their reimbursement from national insurance, and national insurance is only allowed to give you back for two years. Mm -hmm. So you got three years and four years that you can't get back because the government, some your your um appointment letter is sitting on somebody's desk or it's a filing cabinet. Right? Okay, nurses are paid increments for qualifications. So if you get a second qualification in the nursing field, of course, you mm -hmm. get another increment. People are waiting now four or five years to get their increment. You can't complain about that because increment is a little bit more on your salary. Mind right. you, we are also asking for a, re a regrading of the, the nurses because a nurse is the lowest paid person in the public service who is required to get a degree to do their job. They go to a four-year degree in nursing. Mm -hmm. And they start at the same level as a senior clerk. The, the, the two jobs are, are, are chalk and cheese. Right. Wow. But, but you, are, you are paying them. After studying for four years, a senior clerk only got, got four CXC. Mm. But they have to have five CXC to get into the nursing program. And then study for four and years. Then study four years, and you can pay them at the rate of a person who get, get four CXC and sat down for a while as a clerical officer. Eventually, they become a, 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 a senior clerk, and you pay them at the same rate as a nurse. Mind you, the lawyers, are paid, lawyers who start in the public service, they start way up in the salary scale, about two thousand dollars more than a nurse. And the lawyers do a. A, a three year degree and then they do two years at law school. Mm -hmm. All right. But so, what is wrong with me asking for things like that? It is unfair to nurses. Wow, this is this is this is something else. I mean, because I'm listening to you, sir, and you're saying um that the nurses have to buy the washcloth in some instances to um to bathe the patients. Um, they have to buy their own um their own masks because they're only given five or six masks per week 
when um, you know they're working in an environment where they would definitely need um, much more than that. They have to buy their own sanitizer. Um, in some cases, they have to buy Clorox bleach to clean the to sanitize the floors and 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 they're buying all these different things and yet still they're underpaid is that what i'm hearing from you yes let me go on nurses do a four-year program at the community college that will equip them to be nurses in barbados mm -hmm. government came up with this idea that you should be qualified to work in all the caribbean countries so they came up with this thing called a regional exam yes Right, this exam will qualify you to work in St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Dominica. But in Barbados, there was no syllabus for the exam. Mm. So nurses had to go, and, and, and you hear people saying, Oh, the nurses will pass this, the, um, this, the, um, the exam. You know, they don't pass the regional. They can't pass it because nobody was teaching it. Okay. And the reason for that, the reason for that is that there was some mix up between the community college and the nursing association and some other body. And the community, community college was not, they didn't communicate to the community college that this should be part of what you teach. So they never taught it. They only start doing anything about it within the last year and a half or so after I got up in the Senate and made noise about it. Then the rest and find some syllabus. But for people all those years, and you don't need it because you are fully equipped to work in Barbados. If you don't want work in solution, why are you going to force me to qualify to work in solution? Mm -hmm. But those nurses who don't get that um, regional exam end up doing nails at some clinic or working at old people's home, um, watching old people sleep at night, not kind of thing. Mm. Or doing hair or something. Or if you're a nursing assistant, you can't qualify as a registered nurse. So you go back as a nursing assistant, being equipped and is just as trained as the person who is supervising you. Mm -hmm. so, so people complain about that thing. And, the, and, the, and they had promised us two years ago in our meetings mm -hmm. that they will do something about these, um, they will call them graduate nurses. Today, right. the government has not put it in place. I, I found out that it was put in place, mm -hmm. sorry, but it was not implemented by officials in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Not I'm not blaming the, the government, like the minister for this now. I, there are mm -hmm. people in the ministry because some of the same people BNA, the Bar Business Association, the people correct these exams, so they get extra money. So they fought against get against against um got rid of this exam. I sat at the meeting, one of the meetings that the pizza was at, and he he not claiming he wasn't there. And the then president of the Bar Business Association agreed with almost everything I said, but she refused to, to concede that this exam should go. And she gave all kind of history, and that's all I know so much about it now because she gave the history of it. Yes. We, we, so, and then, and then, watch. We have nurses in Barbados who are born and raised in Barbados mm -hmm. that cannot work because they have not passed this regional. But nobody from Cuba passed that regional. Nobody from Ghana passed that regional because the prime minister signed an order allowing them to work without having that. Mm. Why she, she, she could, why she could not sign that order for Belgian nurses? Right, because that, that's the question I was asking. If that that would have led to, um, you know, um, us not having enough nurses here, why they had to bring in nurses from Ghana and from um, and from Cuba because of that exam? Do you think that that would have contributed contributed to the, the decrease in the nurses? It has, mm. but they bring those people in and they did not certify that they were qualified to work in Barbados. The prime minister signed an order. They are, they are qualified by law, not learning, not examination in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And they can work, but Belgians cannot work because the Prime Minister didn't make the order for them. You, 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 you think nurses have got anything to complain about? Wow. So and, all, and, you know, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, nurses now are required to have training every year to, to be able to be registered. But they got to pay for the courses that they do. The mm. government isn't providing them. To, in order to get to, to continue to work as a nurse, you have to do training. Yes. And get credits. But you got to get those credits on your own, and they're not assisting you in getting them. But the nursing association will put on a few little courses to get accredited so they can make some money off of them. Mm. But that's what's happening in this place. 
it's, it, there's too much dishonesty, too much corruption, too much, too many lies. So, Mr. Franklin, people, I'm Senator Franklin. How long have you been representing the nurses? I started with nurses about three years ago. Yes. Attending meetings with the Director General. And, I, and lucky for me, I tell people all the time, and like some a little bit of vanity when I say, but I said, I do not like to perform without an audience. So I always take along nurses with me. Mm -hmm. And lucky for me, because they cannot testify that these issues were raised by me at these meetings mm -hmm. and, we, and, we, and we discussed them. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the person forgot, but he's getting old. So I suspect it might be senility. You know, so, so every time, and I can give another example of meetings, why I like to go to meetings. We, I like to take nurses to meetings. When we had the, when we informed them that we will take industrial action if they implement these safe zones, I worked in the director general and she set off the, and I copied it to the Ministry of Health, but she then, she wrote to the Minister of Health or the Ministry of Health, whoever, and they asked me to come to a meeting within, within an hour and a half of that letter going off. That's the fastest time that woman ever did anything in her life. Mm -hmm. And within an hour, I was on the phone to Minister Walker, who was then Minister of Health. He said at that meeting when we started, because I took a long couple of nurses with me, he said he isn't concerned about these conditions, the other conditions that nurses are on. He just wants to get the safe zones. I said, no, you got to talk about these. So we, we still raised them. When Minister Bostick came back from vacation, I called him. He called, they called him. And I asked him what is happening. So he, he proposed a meeting and he attended that meeting. He said to us at that meeting, he didn't come here to resolve this strike. He come to find out the issues. And they said, but well, all the issues are here in the Ministry of Health already, but to accommodate you, I think we can go over them again. And we listed those issues. Mm -hmm. Minister wrote them down as we speak. We discussed them. And then at the end, he said he has to go back, report back to cabinet. Because it was a Thursday, he left cabinet to come to the meeting so he can report back what we were asking and what we were saying. He read back to us his notes and asked us if this was what we are saying, if we could confirm that but he don't want mislead or he don't want to report what, what we didn't say. Mm -hmm. And we said to him, yes, we agree that this is, these are exactly what we were talking about. And then he left and go back to cabinet. So when the prime minister at her press conference say that she doesn't know what, we, 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 um, what the issues were or that kind of thing. He probably didn't, she probably missed cabinet. She would have to miss cabinet because um, Minister Bostick went back to cabinet and reported to them. But the prime minister is telling the country that they don't know. Okay, because that's what we heard and we were wondering why would you be striking and you have not um, taking industrial action and you have not um, shared with, with the government what your concerns were. Um, and, and I think that there are lots of people, even on social media, Senator Franklin is saying that you went about it the wrong way. You, you, you jumped the gun and you, you, you know, you've, um, you, you didn't do, follow the proper procedure. That is the prime minister's narrative that she wants people to believe because she has the bully pulpit. She can make enough noise. Because when I attempted to put my side, I we held a press conference last Saturday. Mm -hmm. They listened to the press conference. And they wanted to make sure that we didn't get the Kelly Air Player or the front pages of the newspaper. They held another press conference the evening and announced a VAT free Monday. So we got knocked off the news. And I can tell you something about that VAT free Monday. How it is so dishonest and disingenuous. First of all, up to this day, there's no order published in the official gazette that would allow them to do that. It was illegal to do what they did on Monday, but they did it. And people in Barbados, they, oh, they got a deal. People went to the supermarkets. Groceries in Barbados are zero rated. So they went and got a back free day for things that were already back free. But they, they weren't looking and they weren't noticing it because the Prime Minister came out and said so. She tricked them. But all this was was an attempt to take my position out of the news because what they said about us were mostly lies. So they don't want the lies to be cleared up. 
just like last, just like on Sunday, the director of finance, Mr. Ian Carrington, came on radio and TV and everything else and said that I was talking rubbish. Utter, but he didn't say rubbish, he said rubbish. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was talking utter rubbish. Because no person can go into somebody's account and take out their money. Mm -hmm. He said it's a criminal act. Mm -hmm. And he denied it. Yes. What he, did, what he didn't know, I was setting them up. Because I knew that somebody would have come out and said it was a lie. So we mm -hmm. kept back that voice note and we kept back um, screenshots of the people's accounts to show that the government did it. Mm -hmm. But that, but we didn't even have to use the screenshots because that um, voice note with the, with, with the nurse and the customer service agent tell it all. It said the government gave instructions to seize your pay. Let me explain that to you. Let's say I gave you a check. Right. And I called the bank before you get there and I said, um, I, I want to put a hole on this thing. I used to come and send the necessary documents. The bank wouldn't cash the check. God, there's a hole on it. Well, the government now, you get paid on a particular day. Yes. But the banks get the money way in advance. So the banks don't have any authority to give you that money before payday. Mm -hmm. Payday was the 17th. So that money hit your account on the 17th. And on the 17th, government gave directives to not only take out the money that there's your strike, but to take out all. So people now did not get a single cent for December because the prime minister and her cabinet or whoever did it determined that nurses must suffer for Christmas. Right. So, so around and punish them. So rather than say, but okay, you they off for nine days, so we can take out nine days, it took out 31 days. Wow. So so I was of the impression that it was just um the time of the strike. So you're saying to us, um, um, um Senator Franklin, that they have taken out the entire month. They took the entire month salary. They want to make sure the nurses suffer. You know, they be you know, really dealing with demons. You know, really be dealing with demons. Christmas time, everybody want to be able to give um their children a little something for Christmas, buy something for their friends, get a little gift that they, 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 um love one of me for. And the government made sure they couldn't do it by seizing all of their money. And watch what they did. They they told the bank that the hold will be up till the thirty first of December. So then make sure you don't have the money in December at all. Wow. And, and, they don't have, and, they, and according to the director of finance, that's a criminal act. But the government did it. Because you can't go into my account and, 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 and take my money. And that's what the government did. And the banks must be, must be criticized for it because the banks should have said, no, but you can't do that. But the banks, everybody in Barbara is friends with this government. So banks will comply with a directive that is an illegal directive to take up people's money because the government want to punish them for standing up for their rights. I'm 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 speechless. I'm 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 really speechless. At the start of this um, this discussion, I said, you know, this is not a show. We have about is it about 158 nurses, Mr. Franklin? How many of these nurses are affected? Well, I don't know how many are affected because they didn't get from all of them. They took from some. I don't know what um, criteria they use to, to decide who they're going to punish. They, when I spoke to you, mm -hmm. I had 158 nurses in, in, in unity. How I know this? Because every time we sign up a nurse, we, we have a nurse in chat. So we add their name to the chat. So all they have to do is to go in the chat and see how many nurses we have, mm -hmm. right? And they'll tell you that since, since, this, since they did these things to us, the numbers have gone up slightly because nurses have come to me and said, one nurse called me, she said, Mr. Franklin, 
I don't belong to any union. I never belong to a union. And I, 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 I wasn't on strike or anything. But this is, this is Friday last week. For this Saturday, she's Monday, uh, Thursday. She said, but I, I drew back to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I want to join your union because they take up my colleague's salary, let it take up mine too. Mm -hmm. That is how incensed nurses, some nurses are feeling. I, I, this morning, I, I, I got people coming here to this office. A woman came and dropped off an envelope. She didn't even tell me what she did. She just put the envelope and gone. She had on nurses, scrubs. Well, she's still, she, well, she's not a striker. Wow. But she was dressed and they are, she might have been private sector. I don't know. I had $200 in it and she apologized for not putting more. So you're in, um, you're here on Zoom with us. Um, I, I'm seeing a Kathy and Holder. I'm going to ask you um, to, to speak to the nurses, send uh, something to them directly in the chat to open their camera and their microphones, those who want to speak. And, you know, those who I'm sure there are some of them, too, that I'm hearing want to speak, but they're so afraid. And this is what is happening, Senator Franklin. And this is what made us. I don't understand why they, why they would be afraid. What are they afraid of? Why wouldn't they want to speak? They're afraid, to lose, they're, they're afraid to lose their jobs. You see, Kathy Ann Holder spoke to you because she is a delegate from this union and she was acting on behalf of the delegate of the union when mm -hmm. she spoke on the, on the press conference because she then would be protected by the Trade Union Act who says that if you dismiss or adversely affect her employment, that that's a criminal offense and the person doing it could go to jail for six months or a thousand dollars or both. So she's protected by law. But the other nurses who are not delegates of the union, oh. they, they are not allowed to speak out on, on these issues because they can find themselves out of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's I why but we see the, the rules that we have in place are very archaic, but the people love them because I don't see why a person can't, shouldn't be able to speak out about the condition under which he's working. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not, he's not giving away national secrets, you know, and then, and then something like this should not be kept secret. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, so, but but you, know, you know what we could do? These, um, you can let me know if that's okay. Um, we are here on Zoom, and if they could, we, I wouldn't call out their names, but I, what I want them to know is to confirm what you're saying. Because the, the, the narrative of the we want, well, we want the truth to go out. Right. Yes. What we want yes. is the truth. We want the truth to go out, um, Senator Franklin. And I think people really genuinely want to hear from the nurses themselves. Uh, Miss Kathy. Uh, before, before, yes? before you do that, then, and uh, some yes. person was just trying to speak to me. I recognize that person's voice. She is the person who, one of the persons who accompanied me to the meetings with the, um, the acting minister of health. There was the minister, acting minister of health, attorney general, um, Dr. Anton Best, the, and the chief medical officer, and some other high ranking people in the Ministry of Health. We sat at that meeting and we put forward our proposals. And I said, and I was talking about the, the terrible conditions of the furniture that I have. I said, and I see her, she was sitting at her desk, and the chair just gave way, and she was badly hurt by that chair. And she had to put the government in court because. The government refused to accept liability for her injuries, even though she was not playing the foot. She was just sitting there normally in the chair. Mm -hmm. And the case is going on for a very long time. And it, it, it can't get a court. It can't get anything going on. And the, the government is, is settling. You know, the attorney general, the attorney general turned there and said, but you don't want the nurses to strike. You tell her, look, if you help me, I would help you. And she said, the, she said, Mr. Attorney General, I can't sell out my nurses. Well, as, could as you repeat that? Could you repeat that, sir? Because that I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying. He was in the meeting. We were complaining about her actually falling through a chair and not getting any conversation. The government wouldn't do anything about it. They wouldn't accept liability. You all go to court because of their negligence. And wow. He doesn't want her to strike. She doesn't want the nurses to strike. And she's one of the, one of the leaders. And he said to her, if you help me, I would help you. And she shouted at him. She said, Mr. Attorney General, I will not sell out my nurses. 
what, what, what is going to happen from here? The minister knows nothing about industrial relations. All he knows is what people tell him. What they are doing is adopting a procedure that was established by the Barbados Workers Union when they were in the process of selling out the workers. Because mm -hmm. if you have workers on strike and you get them to go back to work and the negotiations break down, it's going to be difficult to get them back out. So they were sold out. And they take that sold out position and try to make it a practice. Well, I have never practiced it and I will never practice it because I have been trained. I, I, was, I used to be a member of staff at NUPW. I still have a soft spot for them. They sent me to train at the George Mini Center for Labor Studies, as it was then. They sent me to train at the International Labor Organization, International um, Center in Turin, Italy. I've had training at the Labor College, also through the ILO, and I've trained at the Bible and the CM Public Workers Academy at UPW. And no time in this place have we seen that nowhere in the world we practice this going back to work first before we talk. That is a sellout position. When the BW wanted to sell it to Owen Arthur, that is the position they adopted so as to get the workers back to work. Because when the workers get back to work, they're not, they're not going back, they're not coming back home. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is a position that Barbados Workers Union want to choose to work for themselves. I am not a member of the Barbados Workers Union. I, I used to be. I am not affiliated in their Congress or anything. So if they want to set standards, for, if they want to set poor standards for themselves, they can do that. But they're not going to do them for me. If the minister wants to speak to us, we are ready, willing, and able. He will set no preconditions. That is not mm -hmm. part of our law. That is not part of our practice. That is a settled position that the Barbados Workers Union adopted so as to deceive the workers. And, mm -hmm. and somehow people believe that that is industrial relations, that's what it's done. But let me tell you something. Industrial relations don't work when everybody's happy and soft and everything. When you have, the, have a, an advantage, you use it. That is why you have, to, like, 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 for instance, just before the crop starts, there will, there will be a strike because they want the crop to start out. Transport board, the day before CIC exam start, people are going to exam. You want to do a strike because you're going to use your advantage. Right. When big, ship, when big ships are in the harbor, they call a strike. When you, when you say for somebody, you obviously somebody transport board call a, a, a strike at, um, at night. You know, you, you do it, then it is going to be effective. So all of a sudden, these experts, like Mia Motley, think that she knows something. She knows nothing. She knows nothing about anything at all. She's not qualified in anything. But she wanted to tell me, who have been trained in this area, how to be an industrial relations person. She can't tell me that. She can be a bully and bully people, but she will never bully me. Maybe she can't bully you. She won't destroy you. As, as I told you already, since she became prime minister, she offered me three jobs. Right now, I would be the most senior person in the public service at the 31st. And, they, and, and you can ask any member of the House and of the Senate, but that's probably more, she was not there. She was in, uh, uh, absent that day. Every other member was president, commissioner of police, chief of staff of the Defense Force, prime minister of the Defense Force, all of them were there. Then she offered me my first break. I would have been the most senior person in the public service. Every permanent secretary, I would have been senior too. And she said to me, Casbell, you'll be the best man for that job. And I said, Prime Minister, well, I agree that I'll be the best man for that job. If I took it, they wouldn't go any good to anyone that's left, you would go all. And I refused that job. I, I, I can't afford to refuse jobs with that kind of salary, but I did. And she came back some other time with another job. And then the final thing she did in, in um, September last year, when Parliament opened for the second time in this session, she approached me and asked me to run. And they turned it down then too. So no sense she can't bite me like she bite Alice and the many people. She wants to destroy me and come up with things that she know to be untrue. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. She wants to make me look bad. I had a Zoom meeting. I announced a Zoom meeting for my people. And they tell them, invite other nurses to this meeting. 
so that they will hear what we are saying because the meetings were only supposed to be for my members, but I said it over like that. When the Barbados Nurses Association heard that we were having a meeting, they scheduled one to start before us. Mm. And we, so they were the political members from us. And we had in our meeting 312, they had 98. And that's what part of the government. That's what part, because the government now has to protect the unions that salute to them, you know. Mm. So that's where they want to destroy us because we have more credibility than all of them put together. So that's what this madness start they want. And that's where they want to negotiate the beat with the, the DNA. Not so she wants to destroy me personally because I will not be bought. I am not for sale. Somebody asked me what my price is. Everybody got a price. I say, yes, I have a price. It's salvation. And she can't offer it. Mm. You know? Yeah, she can offer me salvation. I will take the bride. But she can't offer salvation. And, and that's what, so, so it, 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 this, is, this is hatred or, 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 or megalomania on her part that she thinks that she must rule everybody with iron fish. She got cabinet members that she has, as Trevor Prescott said, they have no no balls. He said that about his colleagues because the way she treats them and they suck up and take it. I don't suck up and take it. And as long as they have anything to do with these nurses, they will not suck up and take it either. But let me tell you what I'm saying. She, but, and, so in that group of 212, one nurse came on and said, she was praying. And she said, that sister called her and said that she's abandoned her patients. And she, that hurt her. Mm -hmm. I said to her, listen to me, they're not your patients. When you go to work and you take over the ward, they're your patients. When you are home, they're not your patients. You're not abandoning anybody. Okay? And you have to stop being shot. You have to have a distance between the nurses. You can't be, you can't make, you can't be, you have to have this professional distance. I ask them. To, because the if you have a ward with 20, 40 people in it, and you saw so partial to one, and you love that person, that person is sick and dying, you did under that person now, or the person dies, you're there crying, the other 39 people can suffer, you know. So then I was asking them, I said, look, you can't do that. And, I, and it says the government people can't say which one had it, they bug our Zoom meeting, they bug it. So they heard everything I said. Yeah, they know that they like tapping phones and stuff, and I better so tap my, 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 my Zoom too. And they were listening. So they heard everything that they said, but they took up certain parts and put them together to make it sound like I'm a monster. You know, when I done said that, a nurse said, but that's the same thing they tell us in, in, in nursing school. You know, but that's what they teach them. But I never went to nursing school. I didn't know that was that, that is what they taught them. But, I, but that is what I believe to be sensible, that you cannot go and make yourself too close to the person. Let me tell you something. Even though I counsel people and I tell them these things, I have to, I have to get somebody to talk to me too, because I find myself getting involved with these nurses at the level where I'm saying, like, like, like I am, I'm hurt by it. As a professional, I shouldn't be. I can't help it when they hear their stories. Yeah, so it's going to be too much. Um, well, well, today, I have I have a very small fridge in my office, and right now it's full with chicken because the company sent a whole set of chicken for me. So I will take whatever I get. I don't like chicken myself, but um, they might, so we'll take it. Yes. So you you would accept you would accept kind as well. I accept pain. I accept copper. I accept anything as long as the nurses can use it. Yes, yes. I accept love from the prime minister, so she can undo the damage that she's done to these people with her vindictiveness. Because she must know that she is wrong. But you know, former prime minister said she was a despot, and she's showing it. You know. I, 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 am, I am hurt by this, by this, this her, her behavior to all these nurses, you know. It, you know, she had this, this poster, this t-shirt that said, Mayor cares. Mayor cares about who or what. 
There's certain the nurses in Barbados. This, this is spoiled brat behavior. You know, like when you were a little child and you grow up with privilege and you're in the house and mommy says, no, you can't do it. You stamp your feet and, and throw a tantrum. And mommy says, come sweetheart, let me give you a kiss and, and you get away with what you do. This is the type of behavior that, that she's exhibiting now. She's just, she's just a grown spoiled brat now. I treat it, I, look, these people have children. I know when I, when I hear them, when they Zoom come on, and you can eat there and, and their homes, and they can hear the little children in the back saying, and some of you come and speak to us at night on the phone. And, and, and so it, they're going to touch you when you know that you're punishing those little sweet little darlings. But you don't care because you got to win. Franklin, I want to give you the last word, sir. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate you having me on your show so the other side can be put. Because I will tell you that all these issues that we have said to you, I have said to the local media. But when they bring out their sanitized news, they leave out the, the more telling parts. When I ask the reporters, but I, used, I told you so and so, I said, but you know, I put it in the story, but it never come out. Because the media is afraid of the government. And you know, government does a lot of advertising in the newspapers. So if you don't conform, so the Barbados does not get the news. They get some sort of sanitized version of it. And it's usually one that makes the government look as good as it can. So I really appreciate your allowing us to put the other side, the facts. I, I dare anyone in the government to, to say that anything that we have said here today is untrue. I don't associate myself with telling lies. I would do it, not for the sake of it. And oh, by the way, somebody said in the chat that they will vote for me if I run as an independent. Sir, you, you're not in danger of having me as a representative. I'm not interested. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am.